When it comes to genome editing, we hear the phrase unintended consequences a lot in the news and on social media. But what are unintended consequences? And should we be worried? Unintended consequences are any genetic changes that you make to the DNA that you did not mean to make. Say you wanted to make this plant taller, you would change the part of the DNA responsible for height. But an unintended consequence would be when this other part of the DNA changes as well. So if your genome were a book, unintended consequences would be like trying to edit chapter two but accidentally deleting chapter seven. One thing many people don't realize is that unintended consequences can arise through all plant breeding methods. In traditional plant breeding, two whole genomes are mixed together. You might get that little bit of DNA from plant A into plant B that you wanted, but you'd also get 50% of the rest of the genome as well. In mutagenesis, seeds are exposed to chemicals and radiation. This results in thousands of undirected and unpredictable genetic changes. Fewer than in traditional plant breeding, but still a lot. In genome editing, we use a thing called a guide RNA. This is like using find and replace in Microsoft Word. We could use find and replace to search for the word labor with the American spelling and change it to the English spelling with a U. But an unintended consequence of this would be changing the word elaborate to elaborate at the same time. Unexpected effects in all plant breeding methods can be hazardous to human health. For example, in the last 50 years, attempts to improve disease resistance in potato, parsnip and celery have all resulted in toxic varieties that have had to be removed from shelves. But returning to our book analogy, you wouldn't publish a book full of nonsense. There are editors, proofreaders, and you need to gain approval from the publishers. Similarly, there are ways of proofreading DNA to reduce these risks in plant breeding. Once plants with desirable changes had been identified in mutagenesis, plant breeders work to remove the background mutations. This is like going back over the text of your book and correcting all those unwanted changes. This is time consuming and can take many generations. However, more than 3,200 mutagenic plant varieties have been released for cultivation worldwide. In genome editing, we can go one stage further and we can control the likelihood of off-target effects. We can control the specificity of our find and replace to ensure that elaborate isn't targeted as well. There are absolutely no unintended consequences that can occur through genome editing that can't occur in nature or don't occur a thousandfold more through traditional or mutagenesis plant breeding, methods which have been bringing crops to the market for decades. In fact, compared to other plant breeding methods, only with genome editing is it possible to get zero unintended consequences.